Hello, McFarland. Thank you for taking time to hear my heart as I invite you to join in an important sermon series and all church study. Jesus prayed that his followers would be united as one and that makes unity a sacred obligation. In fact, more than ever, our world needs our strong, growing, unified ministry and witness. We live in an era of extreme cultural and political division and polarization and regrettably, such dynamics can creep into the church, jeopardizing the unity of God's people. On April 11, we'll begin a sermon and teaching series called, Together That the World May Know. It arose from prayer and scripture study in response to the divisions all around us. This opportunity calls us to engage deeply in our shared values and practices. Pastors Wendy and Trey and I turned to the writings of Paul on the unity of the church to create the series, study guide, and weekly video lessons. Repeatedly, the Apostle Paul pours out his heart, mind, and prayers, making the case for unity in the church that being baptized into the one body of Christ, we serve one God for our common mission to redeem and transform changing lives that change the world in the way of Jesus. The mission to advance God's redeeming and healing grace in Jesus is most effective when we model the unity made possible by such grace, especially amid differing priorities and perspectives, sharp tensions, or crippling division. Divided, fragmented churches leave the world to wonder if the grace and good news we profess is true or meaningful. Such division hurts our witness and can damage or even destroy friendships, families, Sunday school classes, and all that we are and do in worship, discipleship, and missions. I believe deeply that we can defy naysayers and prophets of division in denominational debates, culture wars, and political strife. Contrary to what some may say, I believe there is indeed a holy and faithful middle ground of unity with diversity centered in Jesus. I believe that McFarland is a gift to the people of the Norman area and is meant to be so for centuries to come. I believe that both the heart of God and the many needs of people within our reach today and into the future plead with us to maintain and strengthen the unity of the church that the world may know the enormous wealth of God's grace in Jesus Christ. Already, God has given me a deep love for you, McFarland, God's church for such a time as this. Through this series, let us faithfully explore seven avenues toward holy unity, shared worship, shared mission, shared humility, shared table, shared thinking, shared healing, and shared strength. The wisdom we find in this sermon and study series can be applied not only to church, of course, but also to our families, workplaces, and organizations. So please join me in praying this affirmation from Ephesians chapter 3. Now to God, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Please go to our website, if you would, and find there other, all the ways that you might engage in this wonderful opportunity to explore unity together.